Hi, this is Ian Westerman, head pro at EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to episode number 23 of Ask Ian. And today we're going to be answering a question from Jimmy, who wrote to me via email and he said, I can focus during the return of serve well enough watching my opponent and going into my split step, pick, split step picking a target and going for my shot, etc. But lately I'm struggling finding the same focus during my serve. I have double faulted a time or two and then think, what or where is my thought, right? Where are my thoughts right now? And I'm just blank. Rather than visualizing my target and watching the ball through my toss and shutting out the other courts, I'm just blank. <laughs> All right. Well, Jimmy, uh, I think it's interesting that you use the, the term blank. Like you realize that there's just nothing going on up there. Honestly, if, if you made that discovery and during those couple of points, instead of having instead of not having a target and not having any kind of plan, if instead you had something in place that was successful, then what you're describing would be amazing. That, that's what people refer to as being in the zone. They execute and they do what they're supposed to do without even thinking about it. It's just unfortunate that you weren't thinking at all and you were doing the wrong, the wrong things. You didn't, you didn't have any kind of goal, you didn't have any kind of target. So, so how can we train for this? Basically, I've got three steps for you. First and foremost, you need to practice your ability to hit targets with your serve like crazy. And I mean like crazy. The serve is the only shot in tennis where you have complete and total control over what you want to do. You can position yourself you know, anywhere you want along the baseline. You obviously can't leave the baseline, but you can position yourself anywhere you want on the baseline, on the correct side of the courts. You can toss the ball wherever you want. You can hit any type of spin or flat shot. You can pick any target. You can do anything. And if you don't spend a lot of time being able to recreate specific shots, whether it be spin, placement, position on the baseline, etc., if you don't spend a lot of time working on that so that you can execute on those things reliably again and again, then you're leaving a lot of points on the table. So first and foremost, you must practice hitting different spots in the box on both sides using all your different serves. If you don't have that first and foremost, then your chances of being successful as a server just go way, way down. Secondly, you must train yourself to pick up on your opponent's weaknesses. This is crucial. Even if you can hit specific spots, if you don't become good at picking out what your opponent doesn't like to hit, then all that practice aiming your serve is not useless. I mean, you're going to improve your results, but it's not going to be nearly effective as it could be. So as, I mean, as the warm-up is starting, you should be studying your opponent's likes and dislikes, which, which shot they like to hit, which shot they tend to avoid, where they make most of their mistakes, whether it be their forehand or their backhand. Do they get jammed up easily? Do they hate being stretched out? These are all things that you should be paying close attention to so that we can move on to step three, which is set your evil plan and let it, let it run on autopilot. You need to combine your ability to hit different targets with your knowledge of your opponent, what their weaknesses are, and come up with what I like to call an evil plan. That is, I mean, something that they just hate and that you can go to again and again and again and just make their life miserable as the returner so that you can gain as much uh, leverage as possible as the server. And our goal is to eventually get to the point where we've practiced our serve placement a ton, we've honed our ability to pay close attention to our opponent's weaknesses, and then it gets to the point where those things just kind of mesh together, they run on autopilot, and you're able to just boom, 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 go from side to side, pick out their weakness, hit that spot reliably, and just win point after point without even really thinking about it consciously, without it being a chore to step up to the line and say, okay, what serve do I like? What placement am I good at hitting right now? What shot do they dislike? You know, all these things eventually start to become habits, but only after you've put in the reps, only after you've put in the practice time and the time in competition so that it starts to become second nature. Once you do those things, then you can start to zone out and actually have it be a good thing instead of a bad thing. So hopefully that makes sense, Jimmy, and uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. If you're watching today and you've enjoyed this video on YouTube, do me a favor and click like. Also subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you don't miss out on future episodes of Ask Ian and other 
amazing videos that we're publishing on a very, very regular basis. Uh, with that, if you have any other comment, general comments, questions, maybe something that you'd like me to answer for a future episode of Ask Ian, leave those down below in the comments. And with that, take care and good luck, good luck with your tennis.